Hey guys, it's Orna. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'll be teaching you about the function Google Finance, which can pull stock data and other financial information. I'll also be showing you how to work with sparkline charts. I'll begin with the table that I created ahead of time. This table shows some company securities and their corresponding ticker symbols, which is just an abbreviation for the stock share in the stock market. I'll open the next tab, labeled Finance, and we can begin. Here we want to create a table that will show us the stock information for a specific security. We'll first create the table with the company and symbol. Under the company, we want to have the option to choose from any of the securities we own, so we'll have to apply data validation. Under data, click data validation and choose the cells for the criteria. We'll go to the data tab and choose column A for the company securities. On Invalid Data, we'll click Reject Input. This will make sure that only stocks from the list can be selected. It's possible to add more securities to the list in the future and the data validation is automatically updated. Under the symbol, we want the corresponding ticker to appear automatically once the company is chosen. For this, we'll use VLOOKUP. We'll type equal sign, VLOOKUP, open parentheses, and click on A2 for the company cell, comma, go to the data to choose the table, columns A and B, comma, two for the index, comma, and false because we want an exact match, close parentheses. Let's choose Apple for example. You can see that the ticker automatically appeared to the right. Now we can enter the Google Finance function. We'll type equal sign, Google Finance, open parentheses, click on the ticker, cell B2, comma, price in quotation marks for the last price, and close parentheses. Google loads the information and provides the result. We can also choose to display the lowest price for the day by changing the word price to low. Anytime you want more information about the function, Click on the question mark to the left of the function bar and learn more on the bottom. Google will open a new tab in your browser and here you can see the many attributes that you can choose to use. Let's change the function back to price. Now we want to be able to see our security prices for more than just a single day. For this we'll need to add start date and end date. To make sure that the dates are rational, we'll use data validation. Set the criteria to a date, before, equal to day, open and close parentheses. On invalid data, choose reject input. Under appearance, check show validation help text. Write a date before today's date. This will make sure that the start date can only be before today's date. For the end date validation, again choose date, between, and the dates should start at least one day after the start date. So set it to equals C2 plus one. Set the second day to today by typing equals today open and close parentheses. Check show validation help text. Write a date before today and after start date. Okay, let's check it out. Double click and now you can choose a day before today. Double click on the end day and if you choose a day after today's date, you'll notice that you receive an error. Let's go to the data validation and under invalid data will reject input. So an invalid entry will be rejected. Now we can edit our finance function to include the dates that we choose. After price, comma, C2 for the start day, comma, D2 for the end date. Now a new list appears to show the closing price for each date according to our start and end dates. By default, the list is generated to show intervals of one day. 
If you have dates for a long period of time, it could be a very long list. So we can change the interval accordingly. Let's add an interval for seven days and adjust the finance function again. After the end date, comma, and choose cell E2 for the interval day. This list is adjusted almost instantly to reflect the new function. We can change the interval and the list again adjusts itself accordingly. Now we come to the sparkline chart. We want to show this data in a chart so it's clear to the eye. We'll select where we want the chart to appear and merge the cells. In the newly merged cell, type equals sparkline, open parentheses, Google Finance, open parentheses, select the ticker in cell B2, comma, price and quotation marks, comma, select the start date in cell C2, comma, select the end date in cell D2, comma, and select the interval in cell E2, double close parentheses. Here we have a simple sparkline chart. The chart can be formatted within the formula. Let me show you an example. Go to the sparkline formula and between the first and second parentheses, type comma, open brace, color in open and closed quotation, comma, blue in quotations, and close brace. Now you can see that the line in the chart is blue. To the left of the spark line, we can write the min and max values of the chart. We wouldn't want to type this manually, as these values could change. Let's start with the min value of the chart. Type equals min, open parentheses, click on cell B5, which is the first value of the chart, colon, B, so that this will include all values, and close parentheses. Press F4 so that the column remains constant and we can copy this formula if we decide to change the size or the location of the chart. After we have completed the min value, we can add the max value at the top of the chart. Type equals max open parentheses B5 colon B close parentheses and F4 to make the column B constant. The sparkline chart is now complete. Let's choose a different security now, Goldman Sachs. Now you can see that the table and chart along with the min and max values are adjusted accordingly. There you have it, Google Finance and sparkline charts made easy. That's it for today. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video. See you next time.